All right, we're doing a quick video. Um, it's something small that I noticed in a loss that I just had. So this is GM5. Um, both of us are playing Zarya's. This ended up being a super close game. Um, it comes down to basically last two fights, I want to say. Um, if we'd won the last two, we would have won it, but we ended up losing this game. And I, I noticed the, the Zarya did something interesting that I want to highlight and talk about because it, it never had occurred to me before. And this is actually one of the reasons why I generally don't do map guides for the new maps is because I think you can generally, especially if you have a lot of experience, you can generally figure out how, what is the correct way to play a map pretty quickly for like 50 to 75% of the scenarios. But then there's this last 25% where if you know how to play the map well, like really, really well, like exhaustively, it can be a small advantage, which can be enough to turn um, the game around. And I don't think it actually would have made a big difference in this game necessarily, but it might have. And it's something that I wanted to, to talk through. So um, we're going to be focusing not on my play, but on the opposing Zarya's play. So the opposing Zarya is going to be taking high ground here. Um, this is a very common situation where your whole team is set up on high ground, and then you're going to try to get up top. So if you've seen, I think, do I have a Shambhala guide? I don't think I have a Shambhala guide yet. But, oh, I have a Shambhala guide for first point. That's it. Yeah, only for first point. So for Shambhali, right, taking this high ground is really important. After you take this high ground, then you end up the next fight's at gate, and after you take fight gate, you take the corner, and then you, you cap the point. So what's interesting here is I generally only thought of there's two different ways that you take high ground, assuming you're not dive, right? This whole thing ignores dive. If you dive, you can just go straight up top. You don't have to worry about it. But if you're not dive, there's two ways you can go up top. Number one, you go left stairwell, you go up here, and you push through. This choke kind of sucks, obviously. Like, they can all spam you, but they don't have great sight lines. Like, the pillar blocks. This honestly helps offense more than helps defense. The pillar blocks a lot of land sight here. The other option is to go down here, right? Go over here, cut them off, and then push up here. If you get up here, then, then the fight's over, typically. But the Zarya's going to do something interesting. So the Zarya's going to come up, and she's going to walk up here, and then she's going to take this doorway, which I generally don't think of being as being that useful, but I realize it actually is more useful than I thought, especially if you have, um, if you're like a Rhine and you can't do anything, but as a Zarya or a Ramacha or a Narisa, like you can definitely, uh, you can definitely do something from here. So she's like just poking a little bit, and she's going to rotate through here to go this way. And this is way better than what I've done, where a lot of times I just, from the start, like I just move the cart forward and then move this way and start rotating. But it becomes very obvious that you're taking this path, right? Because the team's going to see you, oh, hey, there's no tank here. They know you're rotating. But if you push here, you're going to be a little slow to rotate. You see that I don't actually realize the Zarya has rotated yet. Because if you look from my perspective, the Zarya's here, right? She, she's going to duck. I assume she's just reloading or doing whatever. It takes me just a second too long to realize, oh, shoot, she's rotating to the right. Because there's... It's hard to use sound here because you're always going to hear footsteps, right? Whether that they're here or here, you're going to hear footsteps all the time. So I hear a lot of footsteps to the right, but I don't know, hey, are they rotating here or are they going low ground? And we're not showing the whole game here, but there's a lot of other fights where they actually rotate this way and they try to wrap this way, which is why I'm nervous about doing that. So I'm out of position in this fight. This is really important because this is the last two fights of the game. Right? So they only need to put the card over here, and then, then they win. So I'm actually out of position. I don't want to be here. I want to be at this corner already, spamming down and forcing the Bastion to pop tank form early. So this is actually the biggest mistake I make, is just being out of position. Such a little thing. If I am five meters to the right, this whole fight is different, and maybe we don't lose this. But because I'm out of position, the Zarya gets free walk in, and she goes after my back line. Now, this is already bad. I'm out of position. Um, Zarya's obviously going in. Uh, they've popped tank form, so I don't have anything to deal with that. May's gonna miss the wall, sort of, and then they're gonna go in. So my general perspective when I played this before, which is incorrect, I will now say that I, I, I fully believe that this is incorrect now, is that you walk in, you take this pillar, reset for a second, like wait for your supports or whatever, you know, you know, poke, you know, etc. Then you walk in, you push stare. It seems so simple, right? Simple, straightforward, easy. I basically never go in this room, ever, like as a tank. I, I just like literally like forgot that the tank, that the map even goes this far because I never use this room. And I think that's a huge mistake. So the Zarya's gonna do something interesting here where she pops bubble, right? She plays here, she confirms, okay, like what's her team? She waits for her team, waits, waits, wall out, which is great. And then she's gonna keep playing here and then she's gonna go in and she's gonna take this left side. And I don't even know that she needed to do this. I think she could have easily just gone this way and walked into my team, which honestly might've actually been better than what she actually ended up doing. But I realize this room is crazy strong for offense. Number one, there's a mini, right? Number two, there's cover on multiple sides of this. Number three is it faces the stairwell. So in order for the team to help, right? Supports can't stand here, right? Because they're not gonna be able to, they're not gonna be able to see from here. They have to stay here on the stairwell. And this spot is reasonably strong against enemies coming this way because you can barely see their heads and there's a lot of cover. But this side is completely exposed to anyone who's in this room. 
So if you're an Orisa or a Ramatra or a Zarya, and to a lesser extent Rhine, you can walk over here and take this doorway, ignore the opposing tank, and completely shut down their backline just by standing here. Right? This little thing of taking this room, going in, and then forcing out backline here can turn what's otherwise a 50-50 situation into like a 60-40 in your favor or maybe 70-30 in your favor by utilizing the map. And obviously I do this all the time in all these other situations, but I just haven't played enough Shambhali. Like I played, I don't know, let's say 30 competitive games in Shambhali and maybe, I don't know, another 30 a quick play or something like that. Like, I haven't played a ton of maps, like, compared to someone, a map like even Oasis, right? Oasis is a relatively new map. It came, it released uh, later in Overwatch lifecycle. I've, I've played Oasis a hundred something times, you know, like way more. And, you know, God forbid you pick a map like Numbani or Gibraltar that I played like hundreds of times. But something small like this is just recognizing look, I don't need to, if, if the tank, enemy tank wants to stay here at this post, trying to hold my team back, I can just be like, screw it. I might not be able to dislodge them. There might be too much healing, too much sustain. They might have, you know, dam damage block, whatever. I can just go this way, stand here, and go after the team. The, their team clearly can't walk into the room on me, right? That's like not going to be a thing that's going to work, A. And B, their tank might decide to fight me here, but like my whole team is going to be surging in, taking all these angles, and their team is going to be stuck here, and I'm going to be like, especially with AoE damage, like uh, Ramatra Vortex or Zarya's Right Clicks or even Arisa Javelin, you're going to mess up everybody back here. It's going to force them all back, and I think you can just default win a fight by simply walking this way and taking this corner. All right, so just to play this fight out, I'm obviously playing this post as defense. I think as defense, I think that what I should have done is actually held room, right? I should have flipped this around and realized that I couldn't survive out here. As soon as I got healed, I think I should have walked in the room, burned down the Zarya, and then played from here and gone after a backline this way and just and just controlled that and forced their Zarya to stay here, right? If I play here, their Zarya has to stay behind pillar. I can come this way, go for the backline whenever I want. I think you got some options here. I think playing this post is a mistake for both sides, now that I think about it. I think playing post is a mistake from both sides. Um, but yeah, we're, also, we're just gonna get burned down. We basically just get walked into and just AOE is gonna kill us all, right? All right, I'm gonna stop there. Hopefully this is helpful. Just something to think about for, for playing Jambali.